Welcome to Reflect on This. Hello, I am Johnny Henshaw. This is the podcast version of devotionals I send to my family and friends. In these devotionals, I share the things I'm learning about the ways and nature of God through applying my study of the scriptures to the world around me. And don't forget to keep listening at the conclusion of today's episode to hear about my recommended resources, such as podcasts that I find helpful and encouraging, books that inspired some of these episodes, and ministries that I want you to know about. So let's get started. Please join me today as we reflect on this. How many times do we find ourselves in the midst of a challenging situation that seems almost insurmountable? Recently, I heard a sermon based on an overview of the book of Nehemiah that reminded me of some important principles that help us to stay the course during challenging situations. As you will recall, Nehemiah returned to Jerusalem to help lead the remnant of Israelites living there in the task of rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. What was the first thing they did? They rebuilt the temple, even before they rebuilt the city walls. This is an excellent metaphor for us. We receive Jesus as our Savior, and He then sets up a temple within us for the Holy Spirit to dwell in. This is before all the walls of our life, financial, physical, emotional, and spiritual, are rebuilt. We need the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit as the basis for any lasting and meaningful changes in our life. Nehemiah then surveys the walls, making a written record of all the broken places. He then goes to the city leaders and elders and essentially says, Do you see the bad situation we are in? One application for us is that we must be willing to face our problems instead of ignoring them. We must allow the Holy Spirit to help us see where we can and should make improvements. In the process of facing our problems, the enemy will try to heap shame and condemnation upon us. Thankfully, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8.1 God's process is to use our guilt to lead us to repentance and restoration rather than shame and condemnation which lead to death. 2 Corinthians 7, 9-10 says, I now rejoice not that you were made sorrowful, but that you were made sorrowful to the point of repentance. For you were made sorrowful according to the will of God, so that you might not suffer loss in anything through us. For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. The enemies of Israel in the surrounding area were silent when they were not rebuilding, but they became very vocal and hostile when the Israelites started rebuilding. In a similar manner, the enemy will increasingly pester us as we begin to face our problems and rebuild the walls of our lives. Nehemiah also made the central theme of the rebuilding project the protection of families. He assigned families to specific sections of the wall. He challenged the men to fight for their families as required during the building project. Here is an application for us. While we are rebuilding our lives, God brings us brothers and sisters in the Lord who serve as our spiritual family to support us and encourage us. We cannot do it alone. During the rebuilding project, the leaders of the enemies ask Nehemiah to meet them in the Valley of Ono, presumably to try to intimidate Nehemiah into stopping the project, or perhaps even to capture or kill him. Nehemiah refused to meet with them. Similarly, when the enemy asks to meet us in the Valley of Ono, don't go to Ono. Just say, oh no, to Ono. At this point in the story, Nehemiah's companions urged him to hide within the temple, but Nehemiah refused to do so. Here's another application for us. 
when the enemies of our culture are threatening us, we may be tempted to withdraw from culture. But don't. Be bold as Nehemiah was and engage with the culture. Or, to state it in a humorous way, the only people who never have bugs on their windshield are people who never leave the garage. Don't be tempted to live in a holy huddle. Engage wisely, winsomely, and courageously with our culture. Remember that God is not the light at the end of the tunnel. He is the light within the tunnel. What are some practical ways to do this? Number one, know who you are. And who are you? Well, because I am in Christ, I am remarkably and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, 14. I am made in the image of God. Genesis 1, I am a new creation in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Number two, know that what you are doing matters to God. John 15, 16 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain. I encourage you to live on the hill of Ino instead of in the valley of Ono. Live in the hill of Ino. I know that my life matters to God. Instead of in the valley of Ono. Oh no, I am unsure that my life matters to God. Number three, hang out with courageous people. The early church knew the importance of fellowship among believers, how it stirs up one another to love and good works, and how it fosters mutual encouragement of one another. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. Followers of Christ are the most courageous people we can spend time with. They have the exhortation of God in Joshua 1, 9 emblazoned on their hearts. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And number four, discover God's mission for you. Hebrews 12, 2 describes how Jesus clearly knew his mission when it says, For the joy set before him, in other words, his mission, Jesus endured the cross. Know who you are. Know that what you are doing matters to God. Hang out with courageous people and discover God's mission for you. Stay the course, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, I encourage you to reflect on this. Today's featured resource is the Bible Study software package entitled eSword. This free Bible study software is available for download to a wide range of computers and mobile devices, including Windows and Mac computers and Apple and Android tablets and phones. The download includes several free public domain resources, including Bibles, dictionaries, commentaries, devotionals, and maps. You can then download from within the eSword program many more free public domain resources. You can optionally purchase whatever copyrighted resources you want to create a powerful study library. One of the greatest benefits of Bible study with this software is the multi-windowed display so that you can simultaneously have windows open to a Bible translation, a dictionary, and a commentary. They are automatically linked so that if you select a verse, then the corresponding entry in the selected dictionary and commentary are displayed. You can also easily compare Bible translations by viewing them in parallel windows. For the Bible translations that have embedded Strong's numbers, referencing the corresponding Hebrew or Greek word, you can hover over a Strong's number and a tooltip pops up with the Strong's definition for that word. To learn more and to get a free download of this amazing study tool, on your computer, go to esword.net. That's e-sword.net. On your mobile device, go to your app store and search for esword. That's e-sword.